Okay. Uh, my name is Jeff Stone. I'm a seniors real estate specialist with Douglas Elliman, and I am a seniors real estate specialist. And for those of you who don't know what a seniors real estate specialist is, it's someone that does uh, sell and purchase real estate on behalf of their clients, but it's usually for the 50 and over uh, uh, individual. Uh, we have a lot of different resources that other realtors may not be aware of. Uh, we know how to handle, we're trained extensively to work with the, uh, the older crowd. And uh, uh, with that, you know, many professionals such as the ones you're seeing here right now. And I'll introduce all of you uh, 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 right away. As a matter of fact, what I can do is to put up uh, this right here. Uh, let's see here. Okay, and this is it right here. All right, so we have with us tonight as speakers Donna Fiorino of Quality Cleanouts, Adam Zimmerman of Sil Lee Antiques, Patty Bloom of Diamond Tag Sales, and Nicole Caparisi of Staged. All right, so we'll show this again after the uh, after the session. At the close of the session, we'll put this up for a few minutes so people can get uh, phone numbers in and uh, contact information. Or you could just take a screenshot or use your phone to take a picture of it. I'll just leave it up for another, another few seconds. Um, the reason why I'm doing this podcast on Zoom is to uh, let folks know that there are people like me, people like you out there, um, that we service the older crowd. It's that simple. It's not just strictly the older crowd. We, we handle anybody who's looking to sell and, and to purchase. I work with first time home buyers as well, but my specialty is helping uh, the 50 and older crowd. Um, and uh, a lot of the times they don't know that we exist or how to get in touch with people like ourselves. So I try to inform people of the professionals that are handling the older crowd, such as a senior move manager, which we've already had on, an old attorney, which we already had on, uh, myself as a seniors real estate specialist, uh, we had a real estate attorney, uh, and we'll have other individuals like a reverse mortgage specialist. Uh, uh, we'll have movers on there because I think that's very important. How they work with all their clients is very important to me. All right, so in any case, what we're gonna do is have everybody int introduce, we already did that. Okay, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna kick it off with uh, Donna, who's been my contact person from the beginning. Um, Donna, um, why would somebody call quality cleanouts? You're, you're muted, Donna. Hi, Jeff, thank you for the invite tonight and for including Patty and Adam and my new friend, Nicole. Uh, and that's a great question. Why would they call quality cleanouts? As people face a transition, we are there to help them to downsize and declutter, reorganize, pack up their belongings, unpack their belongings, or empty out their residence. We can do as much or as little as needed. And lately it's been much. People are really focusing again on moving and having to move and the calls are coming in fast. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is there any fee for the uh, initial consultation? I do not charge a fee for the consult, Jeff, because I feel like it's a give and take. I want to see the space that I may be working in, meet the person, get a feel for what supplies I may need, and the overall game plan. Uh, so I do not charge for that fee, and it usually runs between 30 minutes to an hour. Uh -huh. And uh, the kinds of services and vetted resources uh, that you can provide? Well, two other them are sitting right with you. Um, Adam is always a first call for people who have things of value that, or that things they believe are of value that they'd like to sell. And when houses are running over with clutter and other good things, I always call Patty in. Both Adam and Patty will also offer a complimentary consultation. No, that's a, that's a good thing because a lot of the people uh, that I work with, they're uh, the bread and butter, all right? The regular folk and every every dollar counts to them. And uh, when I sell their homes, that's that's what they have to live on. Uh, so 
I take great care in bringing in the right type of professional. So again, thank you all for all uh, being here tonight. Thank uh, you. Yeah, just a, a couple of more questions and we can go to the other uh, uh, speakers. Um, uh, let's see here. Uh, how can quality cleanouts be of service to families that are living out of town or are unable to help their loved ones who need to prepare for move, downsize, or declutter? Well, Jeff, I am hands-on every assignment, so I become the family who can't be there. I become their stand-in. In the past three weeks alone, I've been dealing with four different states and uh, United Kingdom and helping people who can't travel or are unwilling to travel on the plane, stay in a hotel, helping their senior family members relocate. Uh, this pandemic has seen a lot of independent living people suddenly needing more care, either assisted living or memory care. And so those kinds of calls have been coming in rapidly. Uh, going over with them, FaceTiming, Zooming, making sure that the person who's moving takes exactly what they want and need to take, and then working out either sending to the relatives the things that they may want, and finally working on donations. Yeah, no, that's important because I work a lot of the times with homeowners who kids are on the West Coast or exactly. so we get together in a conference call now, Zoom, uh, and uh, I update them all the time as to what's going on. But when I bring in a pro such as one of yourselves to help out, I always introduce you to the adult kids because they need to be in on the decision making from the beginning. It's very exactly. important. Exactly. It is very important. The senior uh, always wants to feel like they're not pushed aside. You know, it, it is their apartment, their home, and their things, and they need to acknowledge that needs to be acknowledged and respected. It is. Uh, is uh, quality cleanouts a, a, an hourly based or a project based business? We are an hourly based business with a three hour minimum. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, great. Now, what I'd like to know is uh, how could you, myself, everyone else here help your clients prepare their homes for a move in other words i was on a uh, situation where a senior move manager had called me in and my partner at the time to a deal to to, to list and sell the home uh it was an estate but what they were doing at the time was tag sale uh, cleaning out decluttering organizing uh, two 20-yard containers filled with stuff taken out. Uh, we had everybody involved on this one, all right? So, you know, again, that's, what do you do to prepare? Well, we bring in the right professionals to handle each facet of the, uh, the prepping of the house for sale, uh, the, the actual sale itself, and then uh, cleaning out. So that's from my end. And right, well, we provide all those same services. I have a steadfast rule though, Jeff, I will not get involved unless the family has okayed the project and taken or marked the items in the home that they want because you never want to put up for sale or tag sale or appraisal, anything, and let something go. So once the family comes in, and as you said, a lot of the times family does not live nearby or they're estranged. Um, I've had people ask me to make an Excel sheet because they're not speaking to their siblings, but they want to know what's in the house. So I think the first thing you have to do is determine what's being kept, what's available for donation, obviously what has to be tossed that's of no use to anyone. And there's a process. I like to work with a calendar and work backwards uh, and try to keep the person who's living in the house involved as much as possible. Sometimes it's too late and the family just hands me the keys and says, we want this place emptied out because we want to sell it tomorrow. Um, and, you know, and then so we work on donating as much as we can. And as you know, I work very closely with the junk lovers who I saw your post the other day, uh, yeah. praising them as well. Uh, yeah. They are my go-to removal company and uh, they're really a, a swell outfit. Uh, they do a shout, great out, job. shout out to junk lovers. Shout uh, out. <laughs> Gary Ferrero. Uh, that yeah. was my mother-in-law's house, by the way. Mm -hmm, I, I saw. I, I use them for family. You know they have to uh, they have to be good, and good is doing a job right, but also being responsive and yes. not emailing me after I try to email them all day. Uh, you know a day later or by text within reason. You know get back to me. Uh, they're always there, and that's what I have I their hotline number. So don't ever email them again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, one last question, uh, uh, Donna. Now, I receive Google alerts all the time with downsizing and all that uh, relocation. And this one popped up today, which I'm familiar with, the Marie Kondo method of uh, simplifying and organizing your home. Uh, mm -hmm. Is that something that uh, you're aware of? And uh, Of course. I think every organizer out there is aware of Marie yeah. Kondo. He took a relatively simple concept and made it even simpler. Many yep. of my clients have her book buried somewhere in their bedroom. <laughs> um, I, I find it very difficult to take everything, and Patty will understand. I th find it very difficult to take everything out of your closet, lay it on your bed, and then tell them to hold it up, and see how they feel, if it brings them joy, and then leave. My yep. clients need me sitting next to them guiding them, helping them, saying, really, are you going to wear that it's been stuffed in your closet for seven years? Um, some of her techniques work. I've watched her program twice just to see uh, what would work. But most of the time, I think every client is different. And so I don't have a blanket approach. Uh, everybody works a little bit differently. Some people need a lot of hand holding. Yes, Patty? <laughs> yes. Other, other people don't need any. You know, they'll go work on their husband's den and leave me in another room. So um, okay. I don't know. No, that's that's great. Sounds like you provide a really good thorough service. Um, I want to get to uh, Adam Zimmerman of um, Sly Lee. Is that the right pronunciation? Uh, yeah, basically my grandparents are Sylvia and Lee, and hence the word uh -huh. Silly. I thought so. Silly. I know you. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, I thought so, and uh, I I know uh, uh, Patty uh, Bloom here. Uh, the two of you do these tag sales or state sales. And what is it that you do, uh, Adam, that uh, you specialize at? Okay. Um, usually what I do is um, I visit the clients in the home. Again, of course, complimentary. Uh, I visit them in their apartments or uh, houses anywhere from Manhattan, Long Island. And uh, mm -hmm. I do a walkthrough of the property. And in many instances, I'll tell them that it's nice. It's a little bit older things. They are antique. However, the value is not really there for a lot of the things. Uh, on the opposite end of that, sometimes I do find some really valuable things uh, in these houses. So after I do the walkthrough, I let the clients know what items have value, what items are not as valuable as they once were. I say it in the nicest way possible. <laughs> and uh, oftentimes I would recommend someone like Patty to kind of go in and do the full sale. I do not do a full sale. What I would do is kind of let the client know if they have a couple items that are worth significant value, I connect them with specialists like auctioneers, or an Asian specialist or Russian specialist. Um, and uh, a big part of what I do is basically offering peace of mind so that they know they're not donating something that's worth a lot of money or giving something to their kid that, you know, uh, without them knowing what the value is. Well, that's a, a nice uh, tag team effort that you have along with uh, Patty. And uh, uh, it, it's great that you do that. I mean, you both have your own specializations and, uh, 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 you know, you always want to work with the expert. That's what I always say, you know. Absolutely. And uh, uh, what are some of the things that, uh, let's see, a couple of questions for you, Adam. What's no longer favorable in the antique market? What's Yeah, uh, okay. Um, there's, a, there's a bunch, and there's a lot more that are not favorable uh, as favorable right now. So a good example would be things like dishes. The children and this generation, they really don't want to hand wash the dishes. A lot of the antique dishes need to be hand washed. You can't put it in the microwave because it'll explode with, uh, if it has any painted gold on it. So that is the number one big one. Uh, another thing is flatware for the same reason. People don't want to shine the flatware and go through the process. It's a lot of paper and plastic, uh, which is a shame, but that's kind of the way things are going. Uh, another great example is glassware. Again, same thing. Things like Waterford uh, and Baccarat glasses, people are just not using. It's too delicate. They don't want to take it out. And again, you cannot put these things in the dishwasher. Um, a couple other things, figurines like Hummels, Daltons, and Yadros that used to be popular are not as much. Um, and then um, other things like brown furniture like 19th century furniture that used to be popular, the mahogany, the oak, that kind of stuff is really passe right now. People are, uh, they don't want that ornate look. You know, they're really going less is more. Um, there's a few other things, but I think that covers a good portion of it. Now, these things, although they're not val as valuable as they were, that's not to say that they don't have any value. These things do sell. They're just not going to bring what they used to bring in the peak of the market. 
Exactly right. In my mother-in-law's situation, that China, no one wants the China. So it was given to some of the uh, uh, siblings, and uh, they love that. They have a piece of uh, uh, of their their mom uh, with them, you know, and the fine uh, uh, China, the uh, glassware as well, stemware. Uh, so that was yesterday's uh, uh, items. What about what's hot today? Okay, um, the hot things today. Number one, I would definitely say is Chinese antiques. Mm -hmm. um, the Chinese items that used to uh, that they used to sell to us back in the day, they're buying a lot of that back. Uh, these items include jade, coral, amber, Chinese porcelain, Chinese paintings, Chinese bronzes. They do have to have age, and majority of the time that I see it in houses, it actually doesn't have age. It's things that were brought over in the 80s or 90s, and they're not actually antiques. But you know, once in a while, I do run into some good things in houses, and uh, and sometimes you get hit a home run with that. Um, other items are paintings that are listed artists. People are no longer buying paintings because they look nice, at least not the majority. They're buying paintings that they could think of as an investment that they could sell in 15 or 20 years and, and make some money on. Um, and that's the same thing with sculptures as well. You know, even if it's a beautiful piece, they really want it to be, you know, something that is signed by a well-known artist. Um, I would say another big part of this, the opposite of the antique furniture, is going to be what they call mid-century modern furniture. So that's the stuff that is 1950s, 1960s, even up to the 80s is popular right now. And as Nicole can probably attest, she's probably not staging these apartments with antiques as, uh, <laughs> as they used to. Uh, most likely it's going to be stuff that is either mid-century modern looking or actually mid-century, I would think. It's a less is more mentality. And, you know, those items are really hot. Some of the names might be that you know would be uh, like Noel, Herman Miller, George Nelson, Laverne, Paul Evans. You know, those are some of the popular, you know, mid-century designers that uh, seem to be selling right now. You know, two, two stories come to mind right away, Adam, when you were talking about what's hot. Uh, I had uh, uh, listed this house in Glen Cove and it ended up having a quarter of a million um, uh, Chinese, Japanese artwork, jade, I mean, mm -hmm. big statues. And I ended up calling up a, uh, uh, an appraiser. Finally ended up in Martha's Vineyard. It was a long about way. And, you know, that's not part of my, my, my work, so to speak, my expertise. But we, we found somebody, and I had to take pictures of everything and send it to him just so that he felt it was important enough and expensive enough he'd come down. You know, mm -hmm. think about it, you know, but somebody like you, that would have helped me out a lot. You know? So that's why having the right person for the right job is the most important thing you can do. Uh, the other one, I was in a house in, uh, uh, in Bayside. And uh, this uh, lady, when I was walking by the kitchen, I said, oh, that's a nice painting. She says, oh, really? That's worth $35,000. I said, really? <laughs> right on the wall next to the kitchen. I go, mm -hmm. okay. You know, so you never know what you're going to bump into. And uh, so what is the most valuable thing that you've sold for a client? Um, I had a couple of six figure items. One that comes to mind was uh, a woman in Huntington Bay uh, had a Russian painting. So I had a Russian specialist that, um, that took a look at it. He, you know, valued it correctly because that's all he specializes in. And long story short, it sold at auction for uh, very close to $200,000. Wow. Oh. And uh, a lot of times with Russian, you really got to get it to the specialist. You don't want to put it in decorative arts auction or an auction that does European and American. You know, Russian specific is uh, the way to get the most money without it leaving the country and going to Europe. So, you know, I have clients that, uh, that deal with that specially. And, you know, that was the way to go for that piece. And the client uh, was extremely happy because the numbers that she was getting from other people were not that high. Uh-huh. Amazing. Oh, okay. Wow. That's a valuable service you provide, Adam. Uh, yeah, and just to just real quickly, because I know uh, Donna uh, already spoke, I've been working with Donna for a long time. And you know, her clients really, really have nice things to say about her. She's really patient. And in, I know in, in your business, uh, Jeff, you really need people to be patient, especially with the older clients. And I think yes. that's a very important thing. Uh, and regarding Patty, uh, I worked with Patty in the past as well, and uh, I'm actually looking at furniture in my house that I got at uh, <laughs> at her sale in the past. Uh, <laughs> helping out with, and uh, and as well, I've recommended it to many of my clients. So uh, I appreciate you. You know, no, no, no. That's 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 wonderful, uh, Patty. Yes. All right. Okay. So you're the uh, uh, 
uh, hot tag sales uh, person. And uh, <laughs> what would you like to say that's, uh, uh, that uh, is slightly different from Adam? He deals with maybe higher end items and you deal with uh, uh, other things of value to the homeowner. And uh, so explain a little bit about what you do, your business. Sure. Well, first of all, thank you, Jeff, for inviting me and Donna for including me. And I'm so happy to meet all of you and see you all face to face. Um, so what I do is I do a full house estate or tag sale, which the two of them are synonymous. Um, typically an estate means somebody has passed away and the contents now are being liquidated. Uh, but it, the process is the same. So I too meet with the client, um, discuss the you know, what exactly is going to be for sale in the house. And um, what I do is we choose a date for the tag sale. I photograph the items in the house, uh, generate a link, put it up on my website and email it to my, my client. And then they can share it with neighbors, friends, family. Um, and then we come and we set up the whole house like a store for the day. So we bring out tables, racks, everything that's needed. Um, display cases for jewelry, uh, a front desk. We, we set it up kind of like a pop-up shop for the day. And we offer everything each week at Tag Sale. So, you know, we are offering the half bottles of Windex under the kitchen sink and the $10,000 $10, painting behind me, you know. Um, so we really do offer everything. Um, many times, uh, as Adam said, people don't really know what is of value in their home. And many times people do have that kind of an old fashioned belief that, you know, grandma's China has been in the family for so long, we're carrying it around from generation to generation, and now it's not worth anything and nobody wants it. Um, so it is, it's, it's, you have to be very, um, you know, diplomatic and kind to, to our clients because we're the professionals and they've never, most of them have never done this before. So it's a very, um, you know, sensitive uh, area, but it's a very needed service. I think all of us can say that what we do is a very needed service. Um, we love what we do. I love my business. I love my clients. Um, so pretty much every weekend we put whatever is up in the house for sale. People come to the sale, they purchase it. And, um, you know, several, most of the time on weekends, there's several tag sales happening. So many times my customers will come to me and them and the next one, and, you know, they'll make the rounds. Uh -huh. So we sell it all, really. Have you ever ever had to uh, let a, a homeowner know that uh, while your stuff may be valuable to you, I don't <laughs> think there's enough here to really have a tag sale? Uh, oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Unfortunately, that happens very, very often. Um, I try not to put a dollar number on right. you know, when I visit a, a potential client. Um, but like I said, many times you really don't know what the end result will be until you really dig in and go through closets and drawers and cabinets and, sure. and everything else. But yeah, many times I do have to turn down a sale because there just isn't enough saleable stuff in the house. Yeah. You see, uh, a lot of homeowners will, will uh, say, Jeff, I'm not going to hire somebody. I'm going to hire you. You take care of it all. And I'm going, well, you know, your very big, large, bulky furniture, your sofa that you believe is very, very nice, and it is, may not sell today. The yeah. big, the big uh, maple formal dining room set may not sell. And while they think it's worth a fortune, you know, we've had to maybe bring out somebody like Gary, who at least will bring it to a charity, give you a tax receipt, and what's great is that you can write it off a certain amount, all right? While not having money in hand, you know, tax purposes, to me, it's, it's pretty, pretty good too that way. Um, so now, one thing I was, I was thinking of, uh, how do you market your tag sales? Because I was involved in a tag sale and the police had to be called because it was getting out of hand. There were cars in the street. Uh, long lines and I'm there like wow what the heck just happened so how do you juice up your marketing 
yes. Well, I'm very careful with how I market the tag sales. There are many times I'll take on a smaller sale where I feel a Thursday would be the best date to have a tag sale because the, we're not competing with the, you know, the millions of dollar estates where we, we've got smaller items in the house, but I'll get all the customers that want to go to tag sales coming on a Thursday. Um, I'm very visible on social media. I generate the link. I put it up on my website, several of the websites. Um, I advertise very extensively. We put up signs in the neighborhood um, leading up to the tag sale. And, um, you know, I share as many, as many links as I can. Uh, so uh -huh. we, I, I'm very um, out there with once I advertise, once we book a sale, immediately I start promoting it. You know, you know I believe in, you know, being very organic too. Uh, my mother-in-law's house, it was, it was, a, it was a, uh, a project. Uh, all the kids got together and organized everything. And, and when they started, first two or three hours, no one showed. And one of the young, the young kids, all right, they got oak tag from the local rain dew or whatever it was, put tag sale this street. And I swear it was a mob scene for the rest of the day and the next day tag sale signs i mean it's amazing you know so all the expensive advertising and you could always send your links on and, and what it is the events on facebook on twitter on linkedin exactly uh you know instagram but i gotta tell you good old-fashioned signs rules, especially if you're always. in a high density area yes and i don't even like to i still advertise in newsday even though i have very few people that i speak to that actually check newsday there are still the older people that you know like to sit down with a newspaper and a cup of coffee and circle the sales they want to go to so i do put it into the paper as well uh -huh. but local signs of course it grabs people that may have even never been to a tag sale before mm -hmm. they're curious uh-huh well, I think you definitely provide a very important service, as does Adam and, and yes, Donna. So I, I like to have everything in a process here, especially with this, you know, Zoom with downsizing and relocation. Now, when I say downsizing and relocation, I'm saying, well, you're not talking about downsizing and relocation. I said, well, for my purpose, uh, it is the words that matter, because when you hashtag downsize and hashtag relocation, boom, it comes on Google Alerts. Google loves it. Uh, and what we're doing, we're talking about everything involved with boomers and seniors. So I try to put it all together like that. So I have in the beginning, get yourself a real estate attorney, get yourself a seniors real estate specialist. You may want to talk to an L law attorney about updating your, uh, your, your, your trust or your living will or, and on and on and on. So this is the natural progression of things here. Um, now I know in order to sell a home, uh, sometimes you have to do things a little bit differently. You have to stage a home, all right? And I know staging, there are, there are two schools of it saying, oh, no, it's, it's not needed. Others saying, yes, it is needed. It's provided value. So I'm going to have Nicole Caparisi of, of staged uh, uh, introduce herself right now. Hi, Nicole. Hi, Jeff. Hi, everybody. Thanks for inviting me. This is very exciting. I also want to say that Nicole is a Douglas Elliman agent, which I wasn't aware of, but, you know, I figured I'd give her a shout out. <laughs> we wear many hats, folks. Yes, yes, we do. Okay, Nicole, why is staging important? Staging is very important, especially today, because a lot and a majority of buyers are looking online right away for um, looking for a new property. Um, they're more inclined to search um, Zillow and Realtor.com um, for new properties, whether you know they're just going to the island or relocation for anywhere else. You know they need to update. Um, they need to update their properties for new buyers um, coming in. So it's, it's important for sellers to um, stage their. Um, houses with uh, updated pieces and furniture. Is it is it something that you can work with that's already in the uh, home? Uh, yes, we do. We do um, edits. So sometimes um, some people just need a little bit of updating. Um, they might have like really beautiful pieces of um, tables and, and chairs, but sometimes their sofas, you know, maybe really lived in. So we come in and we bring. Um, 
you know, like colorful pieces, uh -huh. pieces that will really um, right. shine on, on the internet. Uh -huh. uh, okay, now, uh, staging, I, from a realtor's point of view, I, there are two schools of thought. It does bring in uh, added value for the, uh, the property. They tend to sell maybe 31% faster days yes. on market than uh, unstaged or non-staged homes. Mm -hmm. uh, is that correct? Do you, you find that to be uh, true? Or? Yes. I mean, a lot of um, my clients, oh, I have a very large array of different clients. So sometimes I have clients who come to me with either new developments and, uh, you know, they want everything decked out. But um, for people who might be downsizing or um, relocating, they, um, I'm sorry, what was your question? No, it's about uh, how much value does staging actually bring to the sale of a home? Yes, so we have we have turnaround times really quickly. Sometimes someone um, will list a property and if they're having some difficulty selling it. Sometimes some properties are, are hard to sell. I've had properties as small as 450 square feet, you know, in Manhattan and Brooklyn. And, you know, we have to be really creative to, uh, and put new pieces of furniture and accessories in there. Um, sometimes when those pictures go online right away, people, you know, flock to it and they get sold really quickly rather than them being empty and someone doesn't really know how to arrange their own pieces in that property. Uh -huh. Now I see two things. I go into uh, homes and like I, I service uh, the 50 and over crowd and a lot of the times um, uh, the homes can be a little tired inside, need updating, things like that. The furniture is a little, little off, say. Um, now, two things come to my mind. The, the cost of bringing somebody into stage, to freshen it up a little bit, and mm -hmm. somebody also to organize and declutter the stuff that they've, that they've managed to collect over all the years while living there. So uh, maybe there's kind of like a relationship that you have with, say, someone like Patty and, or, uh, or yourself, to, or you do decluttering. I mean, because I see a multiple parts here. Yeah, I mean, I always, I always tell um, my clients to smart, sm start small. You have years of valuables and things to go through. Um, so starting early is really important. You might want to remin reminisce, uh, and you might have, you know, emotional attachment to pieces. Um, uh -huh. You know, I always, you know, recommend starting in the kitchen. Sometimes you don't need two full cabinets of hundreds of cups and and mugs, and you know, so I also help people um, declutter and take things out, you know, pl uh, placing of that, of the accessories. Some people have open shelf cabinets, just, you know, making it look really um, magazine worthy is, is important to people. Yeah, uh, one thing that uh, is popular with some uh, uh, realtors is that they have virtual staging, especially on a vacant property. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm, I can see the benefit of that, but then again, I've also had people that come to the house saying, well, where's all that beautiful furniture? <laughs> yeah, well, well, we just got rid of it. Yeah, yeah. So. Virtual staging, I mean, it's it's great to view online, but you know, when someone actually picks up the phone, calls the agent and wants to make an appointment and they go into the property, you know, sometimes they, you know, don't realize that the virtual staging may be the dimensions of um, the pieces that they store online, you know, they might have looked a little bigger. The pictures looked, you know, a lot different than when you're actually at the property and, you know, it's everything is, you know, according to size and placed the right, right way. So it's, it's kind of, it's kind of difficult for someone to go into an apartment sometimes and see how they can visualize themselves in there when right. there's something there. Now, uh, uh, a lot of folks could be uh, house rich in and, and uh, just cash poor. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, a lot of the times these homes are pretty much the only asset they, they have of value. Mm -hmm. So they are reluctant to spend anything or they don't want to spend too much. But what are your costs say for somebody that's, you know, I call it the bread and butter crowd. I mean, we, we work with all types of budgets. Um, like I mentioned before, I've done, apartments, small 400 and square foot apartments, and I've done very big, large townhouses and, you know, properties in the Hamptons. Um, 
you know, when people need to update, you know, the small pieces that they have, or they're a little reluctant to, to do staging, because it is um, some, somewhat of a new concept to people. Um, I try to work with them and see what pieces that, you know, they have, what, what can still look good in photography and in the combination with some updated pieces that we can bring in, you know, just to, you know, wow, you know, buyers when they're looking online or, or just walking into the apartment or property in an open house. Yeah. Now, on my standpoint, uh, as a uh, uh, realtor and seniors real estate specialist, I hear all the time, as is, as this goes for everybody here on the panel, uh, I hear as is, sell it as is, that's it. And I want top dollar. And, uh, you know, I love my furniture, that's worth a lot of money. And so, you know, I have to wear sometimes a lot of hats. Uh, and, uh, but what I'm getting at is that uh, they need to, uh, I need to bring in certain specialists uh, or recommend certain uh, uh, specialists, professionals uh, to help out here and there. Uh, because if you sell anything as is, you're going to get the as is price. So I may bring in, uh, say, a Patty Bloom for uh, someone that may live in the town of North Hampstead, uh, you know, uh, a less expensive home than others. Uh, as for Adam, you know, if I'm working a, a house in, say, Roslyn Estates or, or uh, uh, Sands Point or something like that, you know, say, Adam, why don't you take a swing, swing by and, and take a look at uh, some of these items. Um, and uh, staging, well, again, I'm not talking about high-end homes sometimes. Sometimes I'm talking about something, you know, Cape and New Hyde Park, all right, that may need a little shuffling of the furniture because it looks tired, it looks old, needs to be refreshed, all right? Uh, now, we all tend to wear multiple hats at times, all right? Uh, but uh, I'm just trying to see how, because the one deal I was involved in, we had a lot of different professionals helping, and each one was perfect for the job at hand because it was what was needed. And it was written up in Newsday at the time. I don't know if you remember that, Kathleen, but it was a big thing, uh, and uh, we had a lot of professionals in there. Thank God the estate, uh, the, the people handling it, uh, agreed with everything. And uh, Newsday thought it was great that we brought in all these pros to help out this house look good. It's more saleable instead of as is. So, you know, we, we did a really good job. He thought it was, this is a team. This is amazing. So, uh, you know, I would like to think of all of you as a team. So, you know, I could actually bring in one, two, three, all of you on, on a job. But definitely in the past week and a half, I referred two of you already. I don't know if you're aware of that, but I have, all right? Um, it's just the way it happens, all right? So I don't know if there's anything here uh, that you would like to discuss, bring up that we covered and something that hits you or something that may be of interest, further interest to the attendees. Uh, well, one thing I would say just uh, in reference to Patty, and I've given her a state in the past, uh, sometimes I'll go in, look at a house in Sands Point or Roslyn Heights, and I might pick out a couple items, but you definitely need someone like Patty in there, you know, to get the majority of stuff out of the house. You know, she's fully capable of, of selling high end items, especially yes. the, you know, larger items in those houses. When you want to right. show a house, I've been in houses in, you know, uh, Great Neck Estates, for example, where she had beautiful antiques everywhere. And she thought that she wanted to leave them there. But I told her, I said, listen, it looks great, but it's not going to sell your house. You know, right. you got to start removing some of these things. And that's why you definitely need to call you know, someone like Donna, myself, and Patty to kind of get things moving and uh, and definitely help everyone out, including the home seller and the real estate broker. Yeah, I kind of, it's like a tool belt. I'll, re, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll pull out the right tool right. for the job, you know. It takes and a village, right, Jeff? It, it really does. I, I'm not <laughs> kidding because, you know, selling a home, I, I treat it, you know, it's very, very important, especially when somebody really relies on it. That's the retirement right there, sitting right there. And I want to make sure I get as much uh, uh, money for it, uh, 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 the best offer, all right, uh, in the shortest amount of time on the market, which means to have the tag sell, to have the decluttering, the organizing, uh, maybe a little staging here and there. So we want to put it all together and, and, and shine up that penny a little bit, all right, uh, make it as, as, as uh, presentable as possible, all right. And uh, so you all have an important uh, uh, 
thing to provide, a service to provide without a doubt. You know, I've used each and every one of your types of services with, with other people because I've, I've met a lot of people over the years. But I always remember and keep close. Like you're all on my speed dial now, you know? So I just go, okay, I just <laughs> copy and paste or send on my cell phone. That's, that's how I do things. And uh, so uh, does any, are there any questions from, from the gallery? Anybody want to ask anything or anybody here, uh, your speakers uh, want to add anything else? Uh, Kathleen, I hear, I see you're, just have to unmute. Uh, I was wondering how the real estate market is uh, post our big COVID mountain that we came down from. Are you finding that more people are listing and you're selling more quickly at this time? It is. It's uh, it's hot, very hot. Uh, during COVID, I had four deals. All right. Now I arranged appointments between the buyers and the sellers. That because of my after that hands off. I couldn't do anything else. I couldn't even go there. All right. So they 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 met. Uh, they you know they uh, uh, made a, an arrangement to take the next step. They contacted me. Here's what we're going to do. Okay, now it's in my court, and I set it up that way. Now, I didn't believe in live virtual tours. I don't because with me, when I go shopping or for clothes, I want to touch it. I want to feel it. All right, you're buying a home. You want to see it. All right, so I would send them a video. All right, they like it. Okay, next step. Are you pre-approved? Do you have proof of funds? Yes. Okay, send it to me. All right, then you're going to get in the door. So I eliminate excess traffic within the door because of the virus, all right? I get lookers, I don't get tire kickers, all right? And it's been really good for me. Uh, uh, listings come by, they've, they've heard of me in different uh, areas. I'm a member of many groups and organizations, but they know I'm a straight shooter. And uh, I try not to deceive, full disclosure, uh, except for when it may uh, affect my, my client. You know, again, it's it's a people business, but it is it is pretty much hot. You know, uh, especially in the five to eight hundred dollar market and nine hundred dollar market. Anything above a million is, is is really a buyer's market. If it's priced right, it'll sell, but maybe not for what you want. You have to learn to negotiate with the buyer. All right, but they're going quickly. If it's priced right, it'll go quickly, but it'll go even faster if it's if it looks good inside. It's presentable. The curb appeal outside, inside. Uh, staged properly or say decluttered, you know, uh, organized and the tech, everything. All right. So you're presenting a really nice picture. So yeah, it is, it is uh, heating up without a doubt. I see the numbers coming in and they're really, they're starting to add up big time. All right. People, as long as you take the right precautions and realtors are under a big uh, 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 thing here by the state mandate. All right. We have to wear PPE. Everybody come in has to wear PPE. Mm -hmm. You have to have health uh, safety uh, questionnaires filled out, COVID uh, statement filled out, signed, fair housing statement signed, filled out, uh, New York State uh, uh, representation disclosure filled out. You also have to document cleaning before and after each visit, and you have to keep all these records for, for three years. All right. So I want to minimize my work on that, all right, by making sure the person coming in doesn't say, like, all of a sudden, oh, I got to sell my house first. Or, or, yeah, uh, this is nice. What else do you have? You know, that type of thing. So anyway, yeah, so that's it. The market is, is really heating up for sure. Uh, I had a, a client, I'm a senior move manager in Suffolk County. And I had a client uh, that had someone come to her home and in one week she sold the house. Uh, it, they gave her about six weeks to move out because they want to come in before the school year starts. And uh, she's a senior and uh, was, of course, overwhelmed. Uh, called me in and my team. I have a team of eight. And uh, we did everything that we could to uh, minimize her stress because, you know, she was at level nine out of 10 of, you know, what do I do next? I'm not sure what to do with my stuff. Right. And, uh, you know, it's very important to, to do that hand-holding and um, all of the details that she wasn't really even considering you know she was thinking about i've got to get out of the house but you know there are 14 items that we had to do and we just right. went through it in a methodical fashion right. and yeah. you know in um yeah an organized well, fashion and have everything done 
just so and bring in the professionals because I don't sell houses. Uh, I depend upon realtors to do that. Right. Uh, but, you know, and have licensed insured movers and all of those yes. things. We Being licensed and insured care. is a big deal. But with yes. every professional, I recommend, all right, I always say if you're going to go on this appointment, I always tell the prospective client or client, uh, I will meet that professional at your house. So this way I get to introduce them to you, the yes. owner. Uh, I want to make sure that uh, you know everything is, is done appropriately. And even during the job, I may visit, see how everything is going, because that's my dedication to my client. And definitely afterwards, how it looks, the finished product. All right. So that's important for me because a lot of the times, you know, they're, they're scared out of their wits. They don't know sometimes where they're going. And that's another thing I offer, you know, where are you going to? Right. And a lot of realtors don't know, you know, what to do. Their, their, their job starts, stops at, uh, at closing. <laughs> and it's like, well, where, where are you going to help your clients um, find a place? Well, no, all I do is sell their homes, you know? So again, what I do is more than just, you know, list a property for sale and sell it. And that's it and see you around. It's a lot more than that. So right. uh, anyone else here, uh, Donna, Patty, uh, just Nicole, just pop in. Yeah, we yeah. do have, we're very involved with our clients. We, there is a lot of, uh, you know, handholding throughout the whole process. So when I may meet somebody and their tag sale may not happen for four weeks, six weeks, but throughout right. that time, we're in constant communication, whether it be questions about pricing or availability or, you know, timing. Right. Yeah. Uh, Donna, you're on mute. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Jeff, I'm very grateful for this Zoom call so that we can educate the community about the services we provide. I know so often I meet people who said, oh, if only I knew you last year. When I Here had we go. Yeah. 12 <laughs> weekends at my mother-in-law's emptying right. it out. Um, I can't tell you how often I hear that. So I'm thrilled to be able to share what we do. And I want to underscore the wonderful skill set that both Patty and Adam have. They are so patient and personable. And oh what's important God. to me is that they are passionate about what they do. Uh, they become wonderful allies and they are probably the first two people that I call after I do a consult as I'm assessing the next step for the client. To me, you know, staging is one thing, organizing, decluttering, I'm very big on, you know, getting rid of stuff. All right. Uh, almost like making Can we bring it some to your house. <laughs> <laughs> no, I kind of collect stuff from other homes, you know, and, uh, I, you know, I have collections, forget about it. It's You'll have to tell me what you collect. because Yeah, I, I want to hear too one yeah. day. <laughs> because well, my, uh, we, we never know. We may we have to keep our eyes out for you. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Well, my, my, uh, my mother uh, is going to give me one thing. Uh, it's an antique commode. Now, mm -hmm. you know, I said, really? You can use it as a planter so, in your garden. That's exactly what I was going to do. It's never been used. Uh, <laughs> But, you know, again, she has a lot of items in her house. When it comes time, uh, you guys are going to hear from me. There's no question. She she collected a lot of items. You know, I, I feel some of it does have an, way enough value to have a sale, uh, maybe even to the point where something is very valuable. Uh, and uh, so all hands on deck for that one. So I'm letting you know sometime down the road, I'm going to be calling you guys. <laughs> so, uh, but without a doubt, I really enjoy working with professionals such as yourselves. It makes my job a lot easier, all right? Uh, and uh, the less I have to be concerned with, because I know somebody else is on the job for, for the right reason, that that's, means everything for me, all right? So uh, if no one else has anything yeah. to add. I have a question for Nicole. Yes. I have a question, uh, Nicole. Um, can you tell me a little bit about the staging that you do? Do you have a warehouse of furniture or do you do rental furniture? And how do you get it there and how do you remove it before the house is turned over to the new people? Yes, well, we have a 55,000 square foot warehouse located in Elizabeth, New Jersey. Uh, we have a, a delivery crew, we have a design team. Um, what we do is we uh, go 
um, on a walkthrough to a property, visit it, do the measurements, take photos, anything that we need. Um, I create mood boards and I go back and forth with the client until they're satisfied with this design. Sometimes our clients want to be very involved. Sometimes they, they just, you know, let me do our, like my work and, you know, make it look beautiful. Um, so then we get the sign off and everything that is from our warehouse, we have a very um, eclectic range of, arrangement of furniture so we can cater to lots of different styles. Um, Adam mentioned earlier that um, mid-century style was very popular now, which it is. Um, so we pick all those pieces, our team at the warehouse pulls it from the shelves, we bring it to the property, they unwrap everything, I, I'm there on site styling and making sure everything looks good. Oh, thank you. Nicole, can I just ask another question quickly? Yeah. Go ahead. Do you have, if um, you're staging a home for a client, do you have capability to store the things that you want removed to replace with your things if they don't have room on site? We don't currently store um, other um, clients' furniture. Um, we usually use third party recommended mo uh, moving companies if they do need um, okay. storage. Otherwise, um, like I mentioned earlier, we do edits where sometimes if you have no place to put that, that furniture, we come in, we um, rearrange everything. We might bring some of our few pieces in and just try to make everything work and look good. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, before we wrap it up, uh, has any, uh, anybody else have anything to add? Uh, thank you for your time and, uh, and thank everybody for, uh, for hanging out on a Friday. It was nice to see everybody. Lovely no. to see you, Adam. No, thank you so much, you know, for being here, Adam, Patty, Nicole, and Donna. You know, uh, you guys are uh, uh, new team members. <laughs> so uh, there we go. Okay. Lastly, but not least. That's me. So I'm always involved in things. And uh, Donna, just to let you know, we could use another person at uh, Chamber of Commerce to join because I'm on the board <laughs> of directors. Just saying, you know. Um, but again, uh, if you don't belong to an organization, a service organization, uh, that's a good way to provide service to those who could use it. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's, it's not bad business either, but you get a lot more out of it. You know, so that's my little pitch for organizations like Kiwanis and or Alliance or, or whatever it is. So uh, in any case, I want to thank everybody for being here tonight. Uh, I'll have the link ready uh, for you uh, either tonight or tomorrow, most likely tomorrow. Uh, today's been a long day for me, so I need a little bit of rest. My back is killing me. <laughs> uh, but thanks every everybody for being on tonight. Uh, be safe out there until the storm passes and uh, we'll see each other again, all right? Thank you, Jeff. Good, Thank Good you night, so everybody. Much. Nice seeing you guys. Take care, everyone. Thanks for coming. Donna. Bye now. Thank you. Okay.